Hi everyone, my name is Chantelle and welcome back to my channel. Today I have another collaboration for you, two in a row. Today's collaboration is with Katie from Katie Riles Art. If you don't know who Katie is, please head on over to her channel and show her some love. She loves to paint dragons and she does a lot of subscription box unboxings. I also really like her art deco illustrations. Back in February, I commented on one of her videos asking her if I could create one of her dragons as I think they are absolutely adorable. That got the ball rolling and brought us to our collaboration today where she painted a dragon that I'm creating in polymer clay. This dragon will be in a little bit of a different position as the painting, but I think that just adds a little extra interest to this collaboration. If you want to find out this dragon's name and the story behind this beautiful creature, you will have to head over to Katie's channel. I will link her channel in the description box below and in the end card. She is very close to reaching an important milestone with her channel and I would love to see her reach that milestone this week if possible. But let's talk about what I'm doing here. At first I wanted to include the big bottle with this sculpture. However, the dragon was going to be just as big as the bottle and I didn't want the bottle to take away from the actual sculpture. So I decided to not include the big bottle and go with a different pose for the dragon. So instead of letting him defy gravity, I'll position him, sitting him on his bum, like you can see me do here, and having his tail curl around the hourglass. Having him kind of doze off from drinking the potion that he is holding in his hand. What you see me do here is uh, shaping out his little nozzle and his nostrils and his mouth. They look like eyes. I was, <laughs> I was seriously looking at him like, oh, he's, his eyes look a bit weird right now. But that's his nostrils. His eyes will come a little bit later. Then moving on to the back legs. I shaped out this one very chunky leg and I thought, oh, this actually could make two legs. So I just cut it in half and attached it to the side of his body. As you can see, I'm moving around my work surface a lot. And this is one of the reasons why I'm working on the glass plate. Uh, around it is masking tape, so I don't cut my fingers on the sharp glass edges. It is just from an old frame. But this way I can move my sculpture around without lifting it from the surface. And also I can just shove it in the oven when it's done. Now, of course, he needs some little feet. So that's what I'm creating here. Moving on to the face, I am attaching his cheeks here. And after that, his eyes. I'm flattening out these little snakes of clay and then going in with my explorer tool on the sides of it, shaping it out like a feather, kind of tufty kind of way to make his eyebrows. He's got little tufts that are sitting behind his eyebrows as well. So that's what I'm adding here. And here I am creating the goatee and his little mo, just the same way as his eyebrows. And for even more detail, there are three more tufts behind his eyebrows and the tufts that are already on there on his head. 
and that's what I'm adding here. They're, they look a little bit like leaves. Then I still had some leftover nails or teeth. They can be used for both uh, from a previous project. And I am just pushing them into his feet and hands with some bacon bomb to make them attach a little bit better. This is what we had so far. Now moving on to his arms, two chunky little arms that I'm rolling out here and then attaching to his body. This dragon has these little tufts of fur going from the tip of his tail all the way to the back of his head over his back. And I'm adding the little tufts here and then blending them out with my explorer tool. And this is what it looks like when they're all on. Moving on to his hands, basically the same way as his feet. His feet have three toes and his hands have three fingers and a thumb. And it's basically the same way of shaping them out. Just at the end, I will attach the hands to his arms with a piece of metal wire to make it all a little bit more secure. Just positioning his hands here. I was gonna have him hold the bottle, but then I thought he's holding his tummy and then with the other hand, he's leaning on the little bottle in front of him. And then attaching the nails to the hands. Moving on to the wings. Here I'm shaping out the wing the way I want it. And then I'm going to copy this one by laying this part on top of the other flat piece of clay so I have to then moving on to the detailing of it and then I'm gonna fold them so I can lay them flat on his back You can kind of see me attaching them here, but I will keep them separate and we'll glue them on at the very end. Then moving on to the detailing. This is a part I love and also a part I sometimes don't really love when it takes a while. This took a while and um, it was kind of tedious in the end, but I really, really like the result. So it pays off. Moving on to painting, which is uh, one of my favorite parts of any sculpture. I'm using green stuff paints and other miniature paints just because they settle really well and they don't need a lot of paint. A little goes a very long way. So the first thing I'm painting is the hourglass. And with a lighter shade of purple, I am adding the highlights. I'm going to cover this entire hourglass in this dragonfly glaze glitter 
just to add a little bit more sparkle and magic. And now it is time to paint the dragon. I'm starting off with a very dark green and work my way up to lighter greens, which I will mainly be applying with dry brushing techniques. After the green is dry, I'm moving on to the purple and the entire tufts on this back and his tail and his eyebrows and his mole will be this purple base color. I'm gonna let that dry and in the meantime, I am moving on to the base coat of the wings. So this base coat is basically the soft yellow that Katie used in her painting as well. This same yellow color I am applying to his eyebrows and dry brushing on his tail as well because this is the color that Katie used as the kind of highlight on these parts of his body and I am trying to replicate that. And this is what he looks like so far. I'm now going to lighten up his whole body by brushing on a very, very light shade of green. It's actually the same green as I used on the frog that I did last week. And his tummy will be this very bright and light green, which is the yellow tint mixed with the very bright green paint. His cheeks needed to be that tiny bit brighter and also his nose, so I'm doing that here. And then on top of that, I'm doing a slightly darker watered down layer of paint as well, just to give that, to get that right tone and then stippling on some details and going in with some black for some darker parts in the eyes gluing on the wings so let's have a look what this final dragon looks like and here is the adorable little dragon i am really happy with how he looks please check out katie's channel and the story behind this dragon if you liked it please give this video a thumbs up it really helps my channel out make sure to check out my socials and consider supporting me on patreon and if you're new here welcome please don't forget you can click the subscribe button to become part of the raven family thanks so much for watching stay safe and i'll see you all in the next one bye